and welcome to the Montmartre Art Studio again. I'm really glad you're here because today I'm going to be creating this golden frog. But before I do, if you love art and you're not there now, then come over to Montmartre.net because we've got lots more art lessons there as well as our Facebook and our Creative Connection. And if you subscribe to our Creative Connection, then you get lots of hints, tips and other goodies. Incidentally, all of the materials that I'll be using in this lesson are available from a gold or above art centre. And if you want to know more information about the art centres and their locations, you can find that on our webpage as well. And you might like to print out your PDF and you can do that from the webpage as well. So let's get into it and create a golden frog. tracing paper pad, slip in the PDF under the first sheet and trace the shapes with a 6B pencil. <laughs> wow! Let's see that again in slow motion. Okay, moving right along, press down quite hard so that a lot of the graphite is transferred onto the tracing paper. Tear out the sheet, turn the pad over so you can see the cardboard. Flip the tracing paper image side down and with that pencil faithfully re trace those shapes, thereby transferring the outlines onto the card. Once that's been transferred, we can cut it out with a trusty old pair of scissors. Now if you're not yet an adult, then you will need one to help you with this part. Try to stick to the lines and be careful even if you are an adult. Once all the shapes are cut, pull out that wire and using a pair of pliers, cut five lengths off both sizes. Once you've cut the five lengths for the legs and the five shorter ones for the arms, we can tie them all together. And you do it like this. This is easy. Just twist the strand at the end and then twist it around in one direction. Once you get to the end, tie it off with a twist. Next, squeeze out some Montmartre PVA craft glue. Alrighty then, let's assemble our frog. We've squeezed out our glue. Next, take the back legs, which are the longer ones, bend them in half, like that. Then come down about an inch, bend that up, and make an equal one around there like that. We can then bend each foreleg back. And that's the back legs completed. For the front arms, create an M shape and twist that. Spread these out. And that's the arms. Well, the arms and legs have been set and we can now glue on the cardboard profiles. So start with part E under the arms. It is important to use lots of glue in this stage. Try to work quickly. Remember to hold the profiles in position until they initially set. Once you have part E in position, glue up parts B1 and B2. These will provide the frog's horizontal spacing. Place this across part A under the check at the rear and on top of the arms. Next, we apply parts C1 and C2. These profiles will provide our frog's vertical spacing. Again, it's important to hold these parts in place until they initially set. Repeat the other side and then place part D in for the eye spacing. Well, the cardboard skeleton is dry and we can now build up our frog with plaster. Now plaster is roughly mixed to the ratio of two parts plaster to one part water. I'm using some gloves just to keep the plaster off my hands and I'm applying and mixing it with a number 10 palette knife. So let's get our plaster on. 
The trick here is to mix the plaster in small batches. Remember it dries hard in two minutes. The ratio is not that important, just don't make it too soupy. The metal blade of the palette knife is perfect for this as the plaster does not key onto it and it facilitates a smooth finish easily. So the idea is to build it up in sections and I can feel that this is already starting to harden. So try and make it as finished as you can and then move on to the next section. looking great and to be honest it's taken virtually no time at all. Time now to move on to the arms and legs and to create the arms and legs we need to make a stiffer mixture. To say that of cookie dough we can then wrap it around the arm and leg armatures. So let's get that mixed up. the three parts of the first back leg. I've left the toes free of any plaster because they're just a little bit thin and it might not stay on but it looks fine anyway. So let's create the other leg and then move on to the arms. over. I'm going to let it dry for about half an hour and then I'm going to sand it. This is a fairly coarse sandpaper and if a wet and dry was used one could achieve a glass like appearance. Well that's quite smooth now ready for the gold leaf and I can't wait to get started. For this you'll need some Montmartre leafing size and of course some gold leaf. So let's get this gold leaf on. If you haven't used size or gold leaf before then you will be surprised at how easy it is to use. The only thing to remember is don't make the coat too thick and remember any areas you miss with the size the gold leaf won't stick to and make sure the brush you use is clean soft. And 